What's not to love about a cool looking, easygoing plant that makes its own babies? Nothing. There's nothing not to love about the Pilea peperomioides. Welcome to my channel. It's Cece with One Green Pea. I'm back with another Meet the Plant segment, and today we're going to take a deep dive into the care and propagation of one of my most beloved plants, the Pilea peperomioides. Now, as we get started, let's um, begin with the name, shall we? Pilea, easy enough, but peperomioides? What in the world? First of all, peperomioides means looks like a peperomia. So it's as if your parents thought you looked like one of your siblings, and so they named you Cece Looks Like Sam. Kind of strange, but that's where it came from. I, I can understand where they got that. This is a peperomia, and you can see there is some resemblance. So now that we understand where the name came from, how about how we say it? That trips a lot of people up. Pilea, again, easy enough. Let's break peperomioides into its part. Pepper, omi, oides. So there's a lot of vowels in there and they all get to be spoken. Pilea peperomioides. The Pilea peperomioides goes by a number of common names as well. You may have heard it referred to as the pancake plant or the friendship plant, or the money plant, or even the UFO plant. But now that we know how to say it, for our purposes, let's stick to Pilea peperomioides. Two to three years ago, this plant was actually pretty rare and hard to find. And when you did find it, it was rather expensive. Nowadays, you can find these plants all over and they're relatively inexpensive, which just goes to show you that the super rare, hard to find plants eventually make their way into the mainstream. I can see why this plant became so popular. It is really cool looking. These big, round, succulent-like leaves. It also is very easygoing and so easy to propagate via the cutting of uh, pups. And we'll get into that later. Let's start though with the care of the Pilea peperomioides. Let's talk first about light. It tends to like, you've heard this before, bright, indirect light. I have had the plants directly in a window getting too much light and what tends to happen is the leaves fade out to yellow. That's a great sign that it's getting too much light. Now pulled back a few feet from the window, the, the plant does really well and maintains that really nice dark deep green color. This plant in particular is probably five feet from a window. I'm kind of noticing that um, now that I look at it, the color is pretty faded out. So I will just move this plant closer to the window and it's gonna bounce back because they're that resilient. This plant is on the floor right over here and so gets indirect light from the window above it and then just general light because this room is pretty flooded with light most of the day it's really happy as well. So bright, indirect light, too much light, the um, color of the leaves fades out, too little light, and you'll see really paltry growth. As far as soil goes, I put them in the category of succulent like, and that's because the leaves tend to be pretty thick and waxy, and so they hold on to moisture. So you want a soil that's going to dry out because they can maintain um, some period of drought. They don't mind the soil drying out. So I just use my regular soil mix, which is a really chunky, airy mix. I use a rehydrated coco coir and perlite, orchid bark, and then I've been tossing in uh, mosquito bits, and that has been remarkable as far as keeping the fungus gnats at bay. Because I consider the Pilea peperomioides succulent-like, 
Uh, you can also have a light hand when it comes to watering. By a light hand, I don't mean water only a little or don't water too often. There are some very good ways to know if your pilea is thirsty. Of course, you're going to check the soil. If the top inch to two inches, depending on the size of the pot, is dry, then you'll want to go ahead and water. You can also take a look. Now, this uh, plant is thirsty. I left this guy without water so I could show you what it looks like when it's thirsty. You'll see that these bottom stems and leaves are droopy. First clue, this guy's thirsty. Second clue is the taco test or the easy squeezy test. So I would just take one of these leaves and if I can easily bend it like this, he's thirsty and needs some water. So as soon as this taping is over, I promise I will water this plant. Now that leads naturally into a discussion of fertilizer. And if you've watched this channel, you know I fertilize regularly. I use a liquid fertilizer in my water uh, so that the plants are getting a small amount, a very diluted amount of fertilizer every time I water. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that throughout the, the entire year as long as I'm seeing growth in my plants. If I see a plant that's begun to pull back on growth through, say, the winter, uh, then I'm not going to add that fertilizer to its water. But if I'm continuing to see these little pups coming up from my big plant or new leaves popping up on uh, my smaller plant, I'm going to keep fertilizing. I've said it a number of times that these plants are very easy going and as such, I don't tend to have very many problems with them, but a few do pop up. We've already discussed um, the leaves fading and that could come from too much light, direct light, bleaching the leaves, or it could come from too little light. To evaluate that, then you're going to have to look at how much light the plant is actually receiving. The only pests that I've had with this plant, um, uh, with this big plant, is scale. And it had scale pretty badly. And so really what I ended up doing, I tried to pick off what I could, especially from the stem, uh, but the leaves, the stems and leaves that were most affected, I just cut them off. And it still looks spectacular. So not really to worry. Like I keep saying, the plants are very resilient. One last thing that I want to address in the category of um, problems is that sometimes you will see the stems fall off. You need to first look at where the stem is that's falling off. It, if it is a lower stem, then it's older because the plant grows a long stem and then the leaves, the stems and leaves come up off of this long main stem. If the stems falling off are lower, then they're older and very likely it's just a normal pattern of uh, the life cycle of the plant. Now, if they're higher, then that's something to look into and always check out your care practices. So how much light is the plant getting? Are you keeping it too dry? Are you overwatering? Checking into all of those variables is going to help you be a sleuth to keep your plant as healthy as possible. Let's talk about my favorite topic, propagation. The Pilea peperomioides is absolutely a queen in terms of propagation. She makes her own babies and they're really easy to turn into plants. These are all progeny of this beautiful plant and I've given away several of her babies as well. Now I have read that you can propagate uh, the Pilea peperomioides via stem cutting. I have never tried it, so I don't know that it works, but I've read it, so it's worth trying. And I just might give it a shot just so I can see. Now this big mama plant that I like to call her is almost three years old and she very readily makes pups. I'll bring you in closer so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, now these newer plants, younger plants, aren't quite to the stage yet of growing, producing pups. 
What a pup is basically is just a small mini plant that comes off of the main stem. So a, a lot of times they'll emerge from below the soil and they will pop up and you'll be able to see that it's basically just another plant. Super easy to chop those off and put them in water until they grow a nice root system of their own and then they become their own plant. Come on in and let's propagate this big mama together. So this is the main stem of the plant. And I want to point out while we're in here, you can see all of these little spots where uh, stems and leaves used to be. But as the plant got older and this main stem grew taller, they just naturally fell off. What I love about this plant is that all of these little pups fill in the gap. So when you look at the plant as a whole, you don't really notice that it has this long bare stem. Now today we're going to take a few of these pups out so you can see uh, how I create them as plants. But look in there. So you can see this is its own separate plant. It has its own little stem. Now this one over here is coming off of the main stem, but it didn't emerge from the soil until way over here. So we can imagine he has a pretty dramatic root system. This one is pretty well developed as well. And I'm going to take just a couple of these off so you can see how I do that. To demonstrate exactly how I do this, I'm going to take my clippers and I'm going to come in and take this uh, little pup right here. I'm going to cut it way down as close to the soil as I can and then show you that it has its own stem and even the beginnings of some roots. So this is going to go right into water. And within, I would say, a week to 10 days, it's going to create its own roots. I will take this other one way back here as well. And again, you can see nice, nice stem, and it's going to create roots right down there. So there you have it, the pretty and plentifully prolific Pilea peperomioides. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I always appreciate your comments and your questions, so just leave them down below in the comments. As always, my plant friends, let's keep growing together a greener world.